today we're gonna be mucking out the stinkiest nastiest pond you can imagine and then by the end of the video my son somehow manages to fall into it which is completely awesome we're also gonna be talking about pricing jobs how to actually do a job like you're gonna see today so without wasting more time let's do this thing hey Elliot come pick this up What is it? It's a water scorpion. How do you pick it up? Very, very carefully, because if they actually sting you, it'll turn your flesh inside out. Yeah, so I'll film, you can pick it up. How, how is that for a, a deal? Okay, so the problem is, when you let me pick it up, let me hold the camera here real quick. Hey Tim, can you hold this camera? I want to show Elliot something with the water scorpion. So Elliot didn't have the nads to pick up a water scorpion. He told me to pick it up. Problem then is I get to <laughs> Stan, I'm gonna like freaking jump on your dino line car. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pick up. It's a water scorpion, huh? Does it actually turn your flesh inside out? It does. They're actually really dangerous. You little jerk! You're such a turd, Zan. Hey, Stan. Who's a good water scorpion? Who's a good water scorpion? You're a good water scorpion. Yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. Those things are dangerous. <laughs> yeah, they are. What are they? What do they got that's dangerous about them? Supposedly, they'll turn your flesh inside out. Okay, so oh. we're here to. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Besides Chase Zan Xander Elliot with water scorpions. <laughs> That was actually really fun. He wouldn't dare <laughs> chase Xander because he'd stop filming for him. <laughs> All right, what do we got to do on this job site? Muck. Fixing a uh, riprap over there, and adding some over here, and mucking out the edges because the sediment that got washed in from parking lot. So we're just going to go around the two edges here, muck it out. I see. Is that your riprap, Tim? John can come pick that up. Edging, was that from the Bayport job? Nah, North Oaks job. Yeah, you're a couple jobs behind there, Stan. I don't know where the key is, but I opened everything else up. Should be right under here. Then I'm blind, because I didn't see it. See it under here, I didn't see it in the little cubby. Did you look behind the seat? I didn't look behind the seat. What's in the engine department, though? Or in the glove compartment, or above. It's not in here. Okay. Not or above there. the. Uh... So our policy is we always leave a key on the machine, because if a guy brings it home and then that guy runs late or that guy calls in sick. Or... There's always one guy that leaves it in a different spot than everybody else. You know that's why codes are nice. Everybody can know a code. Yeah. That's why I buy my machines with codes. It's not because of the extra security, it's just because then nobody can have Actually, this problem. That, honestly, I'm not sure that it is more secure. So this is a clay bottomed pond. Now our job is to go in and just to remove the sediment that washed in from the parking lot. But we've got to be very careful that we don't remove too much material. Because it's a clay bottomed pond, it also means that 
it could have a thick layer of clay. Well, could actually, it does have a thick layer of clay. Could be anywhere from 12 inches to four or five feet deep. We don't know how much clay is on the bottom of this pond, but if we go through that clay layer, we could end up draining all of the pond into the groundwater basin below. So what you're gonna see Tim is doing is he's literally just using his bucket to feel for the hard bottom. He's trying to differentiate between the muck that's washed in and then the clay that's down below. So he's using that bucket to feel his way down and in. At hitting the clay, he's going to start removing that extra material that's on top of it, carefully skimming it out, but preserving the clay down below. Boy, that was a long explanation for that. different layers in it right now? I'm trying to find them, yeah. But they seem, uh, it's pretty all muddy. Oh, black stuff, isn't it? So I see you're just skimming. So you're kind of going by feel to try to... Yep, to keep the edge nice. You know, it's not a big drop off. But it sounds like the owner of the place just wanted to make sure that his pond's not filled in. Kind of fuzzy on how deep they go, though. So how did you bid this? I figured uh, two loads of uh, material out, roughly. And uh, well, I think it's about a day and a half of work. I, uh, it's about three grand. Okay. I think that's enough. How would you bid it? No, there's a lot of different ways you can skin a cat, so to speak. So this brings us to the next phase of the excavation and that's hand locating all of the, the power lines. That includes electric, gas, phone and cable are usually pretty easy because they're right at the surface. 
But electric and gas are usually buried anywhere from 12 inches to two feet below the surface. And if we catch one of those with just the tooth of an excavator bucket, it could cause big damage. So what we've got to do is we've got to hand dig down and expose those lines so that we can get a visual cue. We know where they're at and that way that tells us how safe we are to dig in that area. Technically you're not supposed to use power tools to dig over or around those lines. So, you, so we always hand excavate to find them before we start working around them. Yeah. So you're looking for utilities, right? Correct. All right, the so line it, there, it's running somewhere in here. I found the base from the driveway or from the parking lot. I haven't found any utilities yet. So uh, you want to dig at least a foot and a half, 18 inches to two feet below where we would potentially be excavating. So we're going to be digging down six inches in this area, uh, right through here. Right, so you, six inches, so I'd want to be, if you want to be 18 to two feet, so I'd want to be like 30 inches down. 30 inches down and then a trench across. So not just in one spot, because right. if you miss this area over here and we find it with the tooth of an excavator, that could be a big problem. So how wide? I mean, I know I, when we dug the one in um, St. Paul, I think we did three feet this way across the line or where we thought the line yep. would be, yep. how wide would you go? Oh, well, I would go to the edge of the pond. So, the width of the width of our excavation area. Free your body and your mind. camera Elliot asked me what I would do different if I was running the machine and not Tim here's my answer just like Tim's doing it except I wouldn't be as technical and detailed as he is yeah. that's why he has almost zero complaints on his projects In 20 some years of running jobs probably installing 15, 20 million dollars worth of projects. He's got zero complaints. Yep. That's why I I don't question him. In fact, I, he makes me question me. Yeah, he, he obviously questions himself over and over again. He second guesses every decision he makes which takes up a lot more time than what he needs to it is but it's also the reason why I chose him to be my uh, business partner you pick freaking <laughs> hit me in the back of the neck it's too big yes, you know it the whole time? no I didn't <laughs> know it was you the whole time something I kept feeling like a bug crawling on my neck and I'm like ah Ah! It's homeschooled kid. Is that your best fun, right? Now, homeschooled kid. kids having some homeschool fun. I'm going to tell you, teacher, principal, slash mom. So once Tim gets a feel for where the pond bottom actually is, he calls the dump truck in and starts loading the muck out, hauling it away. Now one of the things you're going to notice is that he actually builds a dam in the back of the truck so that the mucky, watery stuff can't flow out through the tailgate. See, we're allowed to haul the muck out, but we're not allowed to dump it on the road as we're driving down the streets.
about eight inches down is the uh, electric going through here. So it's only eight inches deep. Over there, well, it changes because the elevation. It's probably 18 over there. Did you there, find but, it? Yeah. You already oh, yeah. filled it in. Yeah, it's yeah, 10 over right. there, and it's eight. Er, it, yeah, it's 10. 18 over there, 10 here. Eight okay, so we were call. We were, we made the right call by going three feet, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. What do you mean going three feet? Well, you wanted to know how deep to go. Yeah. yeah, and then we had it over here, and we're digging, 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 digging. Ellis like, oh, I must go way deep. I'm like. Let's go up to the... We moved it about four inches and we found it right away. Yeah, it was about eight inches down, so we, we were... We were a solid, we were probably this yeah. far down, and he moves it over four inches and boom, right at the top. So you would have started digging here thinking you're not going to hurt it with a rock. But uh, just got to dig it out and make sure you find it. So here is the finished riprap spillway. That's all been dug out. Been dug down and you can see where they've got the grade set and got enough riprap left over to touch up the other spillway just to make it look good part of the spillway you can see the fabric below it that's to keep the sediment from washing out from underneath it I gotta actually go back to the hospital. My daughter uh, had her wisdom teeth pulled out and it didn't go the way they wanted to. It got infected and then her face swelled up and her throat swelled up and now they're doing an emergency surgery on it. And I just had to stop by, check on the job. That's why it's bring us kid to... <laughs> God. Oh, no. I didn't fall all the way in there. This foot got stuck. How do you fall? You have this giant parking lot. Hey, I was checking stuff out and I went in there and I wanted to see, hey, what is- Am I curious? We're all curious how you could manage to fall into the only mud. At least this thing didn't get dirty at all, cause. <laughs> so, what- smell, Hey, smell it once, cause it stinks. That mud stinks. It doesn't smell like anything. <laughs> Did you want to smell it? No. I thought you wanted to smell it. What? Hey, I'm going to the hospital with you to get your sister. I gotta go back. Get out of here, stink pouch. Feet. I'm not taking you anywhere. Yeah. Hey, so you want to? Hey, do you want to borrow my truck? He can ride in the back. Actually, I think I throw him all the way in the pond. It'll wash him off. Yeah, yeah. It's a little green. Although, I don't. That would probably hurt that cast, and you paid good money for that thing. Actually, so this is waterproof, so. Oh, perfect. We'll just throw you right in. Hey, turn Get away from me. <laughs> oh. Don't go in the car that way. You got mud on your on butt. Instead of going back to the hospital, I guess. Oh, I did get money on the back. Oh, oh, just right there. I'm good. What? It's just my feet and my hand. That's I have it. no clue how you can manage to fall into. <laughs> it's right there. See that? I know. How do you fall into that? I put one foot on there and I put the other one in and then my foot sunk in there. I couldn't get my crock out. So, I'm getting in, I'm sorry. You better out. hurry up and lock it. Oh, uh oh, oh, <sighs> what happened? Don't you sit here, let's see if I got something for you to sit on. No, dude, my shirt is not dirty except for this part, so I'm good to go on sitting on it. Oh, look, I got a chainsaw back here. I wondered where that went. Seriously? It's only my feet you're gonna have to wash in this car. In my uh, hand. <laughs> uh, 